Hello, everyone. Um, you'll forgive me for reading right from my notes. I really have to. <laughs> uh, welcome once again to Show and Tell. This event is brought to you by the Alliance of Kalamazoo Artists. With roots at the Park Trade Center in downtown Kalamazoo, Michigan, we are a multimedia group of artists and artisans who seek to enrich the world around us with color, beauty, creativity, and ideas. From painting to poet pottery to woodwork to glass art to photography and digital media, we work for a more inspired, thoughtful, and forward-moving community. Last year, I gave you a brief overview of my yearly practice as a full-time painter here in Kalamazoo. This year, I would like to share with you the personal side of the art-making experience. <laughs> Interacting with art gives us infinite opportunities to change. We encounter new ideas, see things from different angles or perspectives, consider people and places we didn't even know existed, and spend way more time with everyday things than we normally would. Every time I start a new series of works, I set out with intentions that, without fail, will change, sometimes completely halfway through. Over the years, I have come to realize that art is not a podium in which I can communicate my lofty beliefs to the world. Rather, it is a great personal teacher that knows my journey, and the specific things that I need to see in order to grow and give back to the world appropriately. So without further ado, I'm going to talk about what I have learned from each of my series of paintings, often despite my original intentions. My series, Bridging the Distance, taught me, that some necessary lessons, taught me some necessary lessons early on in my career. Spending a lot of time with dead plants, pigs, dirty old shoes, spiders, and human guts, I learned the importance of recognizing the complexity of the issues we face. As complicated an issue is, so equally elaborate and nuanced our response must be. There are no simple answers. We've got to clearly see our own failings before we point out the failings of the world. We've got to take a deep look at where our own beliefs come from before we proclaim what we, that we have all the answers. Yelling is never as effective as we think it is. I learned also to make a habit of noticing and reflecting on the small things around me and the vast web that connects us. The paper towel I use daily is made of plants. The ground I walk on is inhabited by millions of bugs. The shoes on my feet are made from materials and labor from all over the world. Standing room only, which uses chairs as stand-ins for real people, was an exercise in considering the perspectives of others. Everyone we see, on the bus, on the street, in the store, on the TV, is going through something. More often than not, something that we will never truly understand. And we are all doing our best. I know that last thought can be a little hard to believe, but think about it. The series Sum of One's Parts was an exploration into symbolism and meaning. Standing, spending time with the hands of a community Raw building materials, rainbows of makeup, the jeweled crucifixes, and the iconic red solo cup taught me a bit about how and why we form our identities and hold fast to them. Sometimes it's not the partying, the house and home, the beauty, the religion, or the friends we genuinely love, as much as it is the way those things make us look. It can be difficult to check in with ourselves deeply enough to discover what we truly want. It can hurt to defy the identities that we've worked so hard and so carefully to craft, but it's worth a try, if not for anything else, than to wake up long enough to see the other people around us. The series Excommunication was an experiment in turning off my phone. I learned that I'm addicted to it. I relearned something that we all intuitively know when we're children, but tend to mask over as we grow up, the practice of being fully present. It's incredibly difficult, but for me, taking the option of check phone off the table resulted in a much richer experiences, a more relaxed constitution, and a much longer attention span. I am revisiting this practice for my current series, because I have to. <laughs> The series for display only was meant to outright attack consumer capitalism. Throughout its making, I learned that I am not outside of this 
system. I learned that in order to tackle mean-spirited raw capitalism, we must first tackle the centuries of propaganda, traditions, and societal norms that cause us to feel certain ways about certain things and be blind to others. I realize the vast importance of building community and social capital, which are perhaps the biggest champions of human well-being that are deliberately stifled under a system where profit reigns supreme. Ultimately, this series taught me that as hopeless as things seem, I can at least put some hope and a lot of work into the idea of community. The series Home of the Favor was a more complicated examination into our nation's legacy of being willing to do terrible things in order to quote unquote succeed. How often the skewed American view of success comes at the expense of so many marginalized people, most often people of color. As a white artist, this series was an exercise in the importance and the important practice of staying in my lane, remembering my own white perspectives and privilege, and deeply inspecting the unique failings that come with it and the complex topics within the complex topic of race and power dynamics. By the time I got to this series taking inventory, I wanted to enter it in complete openness. It is a personal exploration into the feelings that we all encounter on a regular basis. I learned that true love always bears some kind of sadness. I learned that it's okay to be sad. That hate, when allowed to, seeps into my daily life a lot more abundantly than I realized. That despair, unlike sadness, can be selfish. That joy comes most from gratitude. That humility may just be the most important factor in the advancement of human relations. The most recent series that I just finished is called The Temple of Reminiscence. It was inspired by the utter weirdness of antique stores. Rifling through the dusty, tired relics of times past and wondering who on earth had this once and would want it now. What do these things say about the people who own them? I eventually learned that, like every question having to do with personal tastes and preferences and unique perspectives, the culmination of not just one lifetime, but endless generations, decisions, and life-changing situations, is complicated. Best not to judge. I am now embarking on a new series that will explore topics of boredom, tedium, and radical love, all in one, with new techniques. It's probably too early to say too much about it because, as I have learned time and again, there's still a lot to learn. If you are all interested in reading about the series as I go, or any of these series that I've just talked about, check out my weekly blog at ellenenelson.blogspot.com. If you're not interested, that's just as valid. Please feel free to forget everything I just said. Thanks so much for listening. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask them now or anytime you see me in my studio with the door open. Very good.